Uh, so, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, Talent Finders Podcast would like to welcome entrepreneur, uh, sub-animator, and fabricator, Julia Harley. So, welcome, Julia. Thank you. Uh, so, Julia, firstly, congratulations on all your achievements. For those of us that don't know, uh, please can you share uh, share with us a little bit more about yourself and your journey? So I started in, um, I actually just started when I was younger making puppets, and then I went into the study of stop motion animation, and that brought me to kind of where I am today, where I studied at the School of Visual Arts, and then I switched to the Massachusetts College of Art, and just continue to pursue my animation um, and building puppets and learning something that kind of isn't, it, it's still used today, but not a lot of people are using it. Yeah, it's um, definitely a very unique, um, it's very, I mean, I have seen it many years ago, but um, I mean, you, you're phenomenally talented, so it's amazing what you do. <laughs> yeah, so I, it's, I make like all my puppets. I like to see the physical like character there in the moment. Um, I don't really like sitting on my computer doing all that. I like kind of playing with the puppet, acting it out myself, and performing it through the character. And that's always exciting. After like a day of shooting, when you can look back on like the thirty seconds that you shot and be like, oh. That took a lot of work, and it and it worked. Like I brought this thing to life. That was definitely one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. Amazing. So your work as an animator, um, is brilliant. What made you get into this very specialized and unique style of animation? And what was your inspiration? I have to say, it was from when I was really little, just watching like Nightmare Before Christmas. I was watching like all these like. So just all the Christmas specials, like Rudolph and like all like the um, Harry Housen, like all the skeletons, like warriors, and I was I always just thought that oh like that's so tangible, and then I I like picked up like a pack of clay and I was like I can do this, like it was just some like it was it was an animation I think for me that was just like the most tangible besides like two D or like like three D animation, so I just kept with it. I was so passionate about it, and I just keep going with it. Wow, that's amazing. So, um, is your style of animation something that you studied or self-taught, and um, what are some of the base projects you've worked on? So, right now I'm working with Twisted. Um, they're an insane clown, clown posse band, so working on their music video at them. Um, but I've worked with um, a lot of musicians. I worked with Polius. They, we did um, a stop-motion video out of the South. That's on ice, um, and I worked with House Without a Ceiling, really good band based out of Miami, did some of their stuff, um, such as like CD cover work and music videos. I really like touching with music because it's such like a broad spectrum, and you can create anything within three minutes. Um, I, I really just like going with the music route and kind of picturing like what what would go well with this music. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so what are some of the biggest lessons and learnings you can share with us uh, through your entrepreneurial journey, um, and what are your some of your career highlights? So I would have to say my career highlights right now would be um, Twisted, just because that would bring my image out there really to like, uh, like a, a music channel or program. Uh, um, I would have to say my highlights is honestly just like get people to talk to people, building a community, because a lot of times stop motion animators are very like we're all like kind of just in our own zone, in our studios, in our own lands, and it's hard to kind of get out and like talk to one another. So I'm really like that social, like through social media, I've actually um, acquired like out there that are also stop motion animators all over the world, and it's really interesting like that social media has done a lot for, like, a grouping of people um, to get together with everyone and talk about, like, what the next project is or share projects. Um, but I really just really enjoy doing it, and I've just done it from such a young age and just teaching myself and then refining it through school. It's been really well. 
Incredible. So that leads me to the next question. Uh, can you share with us um, as an animator about your creative process and how you come up with these amazing scenes um, and processes? Um, so I, a lot of times I'll draw it out and sketch it out. Um, and I'll just go from there, from concept art, getting all the colors together, making sure all the colors work, schematically, going with the vibe. Um, and actually, so I, I, like, a lot of my stuff is music-based, so I really love to just like sit down and like think about like the song over and over again, and then I'll like get it out on paper, what I'm thinking and what I like, got inspired, touching some stuff from it, and then I'll put it into a video. Um, in terms of what, um, in terms of that process, um, do you work strictly alone, or do you work with uh, other people um, in different um, aspects of it, or is it purely a solitary process for you? It's on, for me. I know a lot of people like can work with us. Like a lot of people can work in a group, but right now it's just me. Um, I would like to have people help me and kind of build a studio, but I. For me right now, it's only like typical just for like me and like tiny studio um, just to do it myself because I'm okay. very like in my own world getting it done and I like I'll like, sculpt every asset that I'm doing and then I'll just like get really deep in the animation where it's like like you're talking to a wall almost because I'm like, just in it like doing like the the lips and the voice acting and like getting the character to do it. So I, I feel like for me, it's a really solitary kind of like zen mode. So I, re I actually do really like being like alone in my studio, just getting it, like pounding it out. Yeah, and also less distractions, I suppose, as well. Sometimes like it's, it's almost like if I have someone there, it just takes more time because I'm explaining what to do. But So what would you say your long-term vision um, as an animator is uh, through the power of uh, storytelling or, or something else? So what, yeah, what is your long-term vision? I would love to just keep going with this and being a director of my own, just for like my own uh, music video projects. I love, I love going the route of music videos right now. That's just been like, so it's, uh, like, it's, it's short. You can keep it short and do anything you want in the realm of music videos, like whether it be like color-wise or choice-wise. But I would love to actually do a, like a film one day. My, my, vision of, for me in 10 years is to be a director. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm sure you'll achieve it, for sure. So, and especially because it's it definitely, definitely um, a very uh, unique and, you know, specialized area. So I don't think it's something that everybody can, you know, necessarily do or has the ability to do if you don't have the creative, uh, creative mind to do something like that. So, yeah. Um, so, as I mentioned, or as I asked before, um, do you lead um, and work with a team of people? So, you obviously mentioned that you work, uh, you know, solitary. Um, so, what what would you say is the most rewarding part of the creative process for you? The background in a different, like, uh, like setting. So, like, a lot of, like, for my recent film, Widow's Peak, I photographed, like, inside of a dollhouse, and then imposed like the, the green screen character into the dollhouse so I think when it finally comes together and I see it like like that that moment where I'm like oh I'm not crazy this actually like is coming together and making sense it kind of happens on this on like after effects and premiere and kind of seeing like when it's like when it hits like I know for me with the music videos when I see like an action hitting on like just that note that I wanted it to yeah it, like, like makes my heart go and I'm like yes this is it the design um, and intricate detail that goes into each puppet and character, what is your process um, and the incredible detail um, is absolutely amazing. Where does the inspira I mean where does this inspiration uh, uh, come from and how long does each process take till the final product is out? So each pro each one's kind of different. So for the new music video I'm doing, it's it's a less complicated puppetry where it's almost two D but three D. Um, but that's coming from um, I'm doing their song role models. So that one's going to come out of more of like uh, creating like caricatures of 
famous people that that have done kind of horrible things but um for my for my actual like movies and films that i've done like widow's peak and kind of out of the south and all my other stuff i like to just draw from um i'm actually from portugal i was born in portugal and I, oh amazing i've been there it's an amazing country I, it's great i love it i i try to go back a lot but um so i grew up kind of I grew up in Munchmord, and then I, I lived in Figuera de Fage, and then I, um, like, my, my, my dad always took, because he still lives there, and I'll, I'll visit him a lot, but my dad took me to Sintra, like, um, that's, that's my absolute favorite place, and it has a lot of folklore, and it has a lot of beautiful um, details, like, kind of in the fabric where there's, like, dragons and, and mythical creatures, uh, each building has some sort of like nautical beast on it, and I've I've always really tried to take from that. And like I I'm a sketcher, so I I have t tens of thousands of like sketchbooks of just like character ideas, pulling from history and pulling from mythological creatures, just to get like um a base on almost like a storyline. And a lot of my characters, like like in Widow's Peak, I like to connect them with. I like to make my characters very deep where in character design, if I do a character, it will kind of read like what they've been through. So like, like little in little items. So other than like making the puppet, I like to make like what they would have on their desk uh, or like what would they do d day by day? Like what, what kind of letters would they write? Or so in Widow's Peak, I made this puppet, which took probably three months to make. Um, and in doing, it was, it was a really complicated puppet. Um, and I was also making other puppets along the side of this one, but she had 20 replacement faces. So each of my puppets actually have magnets in their faces. So I can attach like any type of like with magnet paint, even you can attach just like anything to a magnet. So I do different faces so they can do all the poses or all of the lip syncing that you need to do for like the scene. So my main puppet in Widow's Peak had over 20 faces of just like different types of expressions, details, screaming face, uh, sad face, something like that. And so she took like, I want to say two to three months just to get every face complete uh, for shooting. Um, wow, that's incredible. So what are the materials um, that you use uh, for the puppets? I mean, you obviously got specific materials or do you use a, a combination of different uh, different materials or fabrics um, how does that process work so I, I honestly use things that you can just find really anywhere a lot of I use armature wire as my base and I'll twist it um, so it's strong enough to hold the character and the character in its feet when I'm twisting it I'll twist um, like bolts in its feet so I can bolt it to a table so it stands properly um, so that the skeleton is wire, and then I build it up with foam. Um, like you can, you could like any type of just like even bed foam. Like I cut up like pillows one day, just stringing <laughs> foam around. And um, a lot of times, like I'll use, I'll save like clothes if I'm like, I'll, I'll save like old clothes and I'll like cut squares out of them. And so I have like a little kind of bank of just like old clothes that I can use for puppets like I'll cut up little sleeves I'll hot glue it on kind of whip it together and then I'll use plumber's epoxy for the feet to get it because um, plumber's epoxy is really awesome just for um, like quick sculpts onto like a character so like the feet will have plumber's epoxy and it air dries and it turns into like a plastic and then um, I'll, I'll leave a ball in the head with the armature wire so I can then sculpt um, the head, but the head I have to sculpt completely without any expression or anything like that, so I can add on expressions with clay after if I wanted to. Um, so when I'm sculpting, it's kind of scary because they all don't have pupils, and I have to like picture picture it without like eyebrows and pupils. Oh wow, <laughs> that must be quite challenging as well. And then yeah. when you, when you set up the the scenes uh, around the puppet, is, do you also use like a green screen and then uh, you know incorporate graphics into it, or how does that how does that work? So I incorporate. So I, I'll take everything um, into After Effects after doing all of my animation, and I'll put it into After Effects using my Keylight program, and that will kind of compose all of the 
it'll get all the green out. And I, I, I know for me, I always have to go in and color at it to get at, like every single thing out. Um, and then I just throw it right on the back of like a background. I just shot in photos um, and kind of just whip it together in After Effects, um, kind of slide it, make sure it's going places. I use a lot of masking so I can kind of fit. Like I had a, I had a scene with my character. She was in the window. And I have to fit her completely in this window pane with, like, all the, like, lines in a window pane being um, blocked out. So I had to, ma like, individually mask each one of this window pane for each frame. And it was, it was crazy, but it, it looked so good in the end. Oh, amazing. Amazing. So that leads me to um, the, the last two questions. Uh, questions is um, what are your three key pieces of advice um, you would um, have for other entrepreneurs um, and for those who want to pursue a similar career um, I would honestly say what's um, I know what's important for me is building your brand for yeah. like I know like through Instagram and through everything like that I try to really stay with a consistent style yeah. uh, just because if I don't stay with that consistent style and, and say, like, I don't stay with my puppets and then go off, like, into another direction, then people don't stay as interested in what I'm doing. Because um, I, I, I've done, like, so much art in my time where I'll do embroidery, I'll do, like, random tattooing, and, like, I'll do, I'm, like, a pioneer woman, but, like, I know with stop motion, um, I built my brand with that, and that's been going kind of really well, just sticking to one thing getting um, my brand and, and kind of a personality for my brand, which is really important for me. Yeah, absolutely. And then just just to elaborate on the, the branding part, so what is your vision for the brand? Is it so because you obviously there's your personal brand and then there's, you know, the branding around what you actually do or, or do you just try to encompass it into one? I try to encompass it into one. Um, I know it's hard sometimes just because, like, things can seem that they're so everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I think telling – I know telling stories – I know my brand right now is animation telling stories, and, and sometimes I'll do my own personal stuff. But I know it's hard to tie it all together, so I try to really stay consistent with the, with the personality and story. Yeah. Um, and have you – have you um – uh, in terms of exposure of what you do, have you um, had features or been in magazines or been on uh, other interviews or um, is that not something you've really, really done much of? I actually, so, um, I know for me, just talking to other, like, cause a lot of artists, like, we all support each other and throw our own kind of, like, community base, base out there. Um so I know for me, getting myself out there, it's been a lot of times where I'm like, if I'm at a cafe or if I'm, at, I'm anywhere, I'll leave my business card somewhere. So then that'll bring um, kind of like attention. And I've had friends that I've had just through business cards through a cafe. Um, and I know just from music videos, I, I capture a lot of people um, from their fan base and through Vice. Vice collects a lot of great creators. Um, so I did that and got myself out there, but it's been a lot of just self promotion, making sure that I'm not forgetting, um, like where I want to go and just keep going at it and keep authentic. I mean, I think that's also the key thing is to just be authentic in your work and, and what you do. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining and for sharing your story. And hopefully we can have you back in the future and see your progress. And, yeah, yeah just wish you, the, wish you all the best. Thank you so much.